Senegal, West Africa, where a third of the population live below the poverty line. Where continuing education past the age of 9 or 10 is almost impossible for many African girls. With education being so fundamental to the development of any nation, one woman has helped create a project that helps girls stay in school and also achieve the skills to create an income for themselves and their families. This organization is now making a huge difference to the futures of thousands of young women across Senegal. <laughs> Viola Vaughan is the executive director of the 10,000 Girls Project, a charity with a difference. Its ultimate aim is to be totally self-funding and to create a generation of confident, self-sufficient African women. I didn't start the project. The project was started by Mum Geta. Mum Geta came to me to ask me to help her get out of third grade. What did you say? Well, you can't do no better than that. Yes, I get it. <laughs> what? What do they have you doing? Mom Geta did not come by herself. She came with four girls. And now we have 2,567 girls. The 10,000 Girls Project helps girls stay in school, get the most out of their education, and acquire the skills needed for lifelong learning and employment. There are currently 2,600 girls in this program across Senegal. We get support from donor agencies, but we only keep the number of girls that we can pay for the school supplies and keep them in school. The bag presentation is for the girls who would otherwise no longer be coming to school for a range of social and economic reasons. The bags contain school supplies such as pens and exercise books that enable them to do their work. Education to Viola isn't just about school and academic learning. The 10,000 Girls Project has an entrepreneurial program which supports girls too old for school. The entrepreneurial program gives the older girls an opportunity to use their practical skills to run various businesses. Some of the profits they make are channeled into the education program. Viola's long-term vision is that the 10,000 Girls Project will be wholly funded by its entrepreneurial program and be totally self-sufficient. She is hoping that in five years' time, with the right support, this will be the case. The hub for this whole program is in our Kaolak Center. But since we are growing so profusely, we are going to expand that, hopefully, into other centers throughout our long line of sites. In our Kaolak Center now, we have about 20 girls who are actually working in the center. The sewing supervisor is run by Veronica Senghor. Primarily, she makes dolls. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful dolls. Veronica also makes beach mats or yoga mats. We have Dasira, who's the president of Junthi Entrepreneurs de Kaolak, who's in charge of our accounting program. La première fois que je suis venue, je euh, j'aidais les filles en français, maths et en anglais. Après, quand le projet en 2002, j'ai proposé à Madame Viola si on pouvait faire euh, vendre quelque chose pour aider les filles au niveau des fournitures scolaires. Elle a dit d'accord, donc elle a commencé à nous apprendre comment faire les gâteaux et on a commencé à vendre ça dans le quartier. Donc j'ai commencé avec elle le projet de l'entrepreneuriat en aidant les filles au niveau de leur fourniture scolaire. Viola maintains that even the most basic academic education can help create futures for these girls, helping them attain their potential rather than wasting it. Ramatulai is one such girl who is benefiting from this philosophy. Her aunt and guardian, Fatasol, wholly endorses her involvement. The support of family and the local community is crucial for the project's aims to flourish and prosper. Ramatulai is learning to read and write at the Kaolak Center and acquire cooking skills under Hadi Job, 
who runs the 10,000 girls cookery business in Kaolak. The Dakar Dragons heard about us and they decided they want to come and expand on our entrepreneurial skills. Even though our girls were making money, we still did not have the skills to take it from a mom and pop to a great international business. The Dakar Dragons are a group of professional business people. They are volunteering their time to help support and develop the business skills of the girls working and running the various businesses in the project. They believe that giving business education is far more valuable for Africa than charity and aid. They aim to help Viola and the girls by giving that support through mentoring and teaching them business skills. And the third reason that a business plan is important. The Dragons begin by giving the girls a presentation on how to prepare a business plan. The exercise we've gone through with the girls this morning was to give them some basic information about how to write a business plan and how to calculate the financial implications. It was very important, obviously, that they would really understand the information. So we've tried to work through things slowly and using real examples from their own businesses. One metre? Of lace or of the cloth? Of the cloth and we've made it a very interactive session. So whilst teaching the girls, I was asking them for the answers. I was asking them for the figures and getting them to do the calculations so that um, we could really see if they weren't understanding it because the calculations would come out wrong. The Dakar Dragons then split the girls into smaller groups to focus in greater detail on their individual sewing and cookery businesses. Marianne was uh, talking to them about the quality, which uh, when you look at the product at a very superficial level, it is absolutely brilliant. Um, but what Marianne was doing was showing them that there were some inconsistencies. So that, was, that was very good and they took on board the need to start thinking about quality processes, especially if they're going to expand the business. <laughs> Perhaps nowhere better exemplifies the aims of the 10,000 Girls Project than Kaimor, an isolated village two hours south of Kaolak. The girls in the Kaimor Village Project are still in school. They are funding their education by running their own business, producing and selling organic tea made from the flowers of the hibiscus or bisap plant. Currently, the demand for this tea is far outstripping what the girls can supply. However, the girls have the possibility of a grant for a tea bagging machine that will help the business become more productive. So this is a group of girls in Kaimor. They're ages 12 to 20 and they are the ones that work on the BSAP project. Would they like to increase their production of BSAP? We're putting together a business case for investment in a, an automatic tea bagging machine which will allow the girls to make more money from their product. Since the 10,000 Girls Project has started here in Kaimor, there is a night and day difference between the girls then and the girls now. The girls now are confident young women in society, whereas before they were soft-spoken, subservient, had always been second class because that's how they were all taught to be. 
in addition to that, their grades have gone up. Their, gra their grades have gone up because now that they're in the entrepreneurship program, they see the practical uses of their education. I think that the Dakar Dragons have taught the girls an incredible amount. How they can stop being reliant on aid or sponsors. How to make them have a product that people want to buy. The Dakar Dragons have come to the end of their time in Senegal. They meet Viola to give her their feedback on the various businesses. I came expecting that they were doing some great things but just needing some help moving to the next level. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I found, so I'm mm -hmm. very pleased. I do think that they could benefit from more business training. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very interested in talking to you about where we can take it from here. As an African woman living in, in, in London, um, Education is very, very important to me, and I could be this girl today mm -hmm. if um, if I didn't have any education. Mm -hmm. It's about helping them develop their understanding and thinking. It will be turning the not viable activities into viable ones, or the viable ones into better ones. Ultimately. What the 10,000 Girls Project needs to become totally self-sustaining is professional business support and expertise. Microfunding, but not charity or aid. We need people with skills who really understand what it is we want to do and will follow through with us on everything that they say that we're going to do. This whole process, it's about helping us help ourselves. But right now, we want you to assist us so that we will never again need to put our hand out and say please. That we can always say thank you. Look what we've accomplished. Yeah.